Applied Metallurgy Considerations in the selection of a particular metal alloy to be used for fabrication Availability, cost, strength to weight ratios, corrosion resistance, electrical conductivity, finishing required, workability Steel Alloys The Society of Automotive Engineers SAE system of steel classification uses a 4 or 5 digit number to identify types of steel alloys. The first digit identifies the primary alloying elements. Plain carbon steels, nickel steels, Nickel chromium steels, molybdenum steels, chromium steels, chromium vanadium steels, tungsten steels. Applications Most steel fabrications are of the low carbon variety. Thus, they typically bear the Numbers 1018 through 1024 Angles, channels and beams These steels pose no particular problems in fabrication. Steels in the tensile strength range of 50,000 to 60,000 pounds per square inch. PSI, punching, bending and forming operations can be carried out with standard tooling and with minimum wear on equipment. Welding and flame cutting can be done without the danger of induced hardness or tempering. The need for pre and post heat treatment is almost entirely eliminated. More commonly available, less expensive welding filler rods can be used. Aluminium. Aluminium is good workability in forming, bending, welding, machining. Stainless steel. Stainless steel contains significant amounts of chromium. The material is highly resistant to corrosion and extremely strong. Depending on alloy type, the average tensile strength is about 85,000 psi. Four basic types of stainless steel bear the American Iron and Steel Institute. Numerical designations 410, 430, 302, and 202. The primary alloy content of each is as follows. 410, 12% chromium. 430, 17% chromium, 302, 18% chromium, 8% nickel, 202, 18% chromium, 5% nickel, 8% manganese. Additional alloy types are derived by adding specific elements in closely controlled amounts. Identification of metals. Fabricators must be able to identify particular alloy types from within larger groups of the same material. When a part of aluminum sheet or steel plate unexpectedly cracks during a forming operation or cannot be properly welded, the shop not only experiences a loss in material cost but also a loss in the hours of labor that went into the part up to that point. End use failure, or failure of the part in service, can cause the loss of virtually thousands of dollars in associated equipment, as well as the loss of human life. Many agencies and companies require that materials be certified as to alloy content and analysis.
This certificate of compliance is part of a documentation procedure that follows a plate or sheet of raw stock from the manufacturer's mill through the distributor's warehouse to the fabricator and finally to the end-use purchaser.